Not too long ago, I covered the .NET 8 identity endpoints extensively with its bearer token authentication. Although the .NET 8 identity endpoints can save you some time, they are still lacking some customizability and therefore I presented you an alternative which is just the JSON web token authentication. Now I want to zoom in on the actual access token and refresh token that we got from the .NET 8 identity endpoints and compare that to our own JWT authentication setup. In previous videos I showed you what is inside these access tokens and it were the user claims and a security stamp. But I didn't show you what's inside these refresh tokens, so we'll cover that later. And in the JWT example, we all also saw what was inside of these access tokens, which was a bit similar, just the user claims. And the refresh token was just a simple GUID, something hard to guess. So what we used the refresh token for is to refresh both the access token and the refresh token whenever a access token was expired. And that way we can get a new access token and keep a user authenticated. That refresh token had a time span of three days but you could uh, customize that to whatever you like. But a good practice is to keep that short-lived. So one day, three days, maybe maximum a week. The shorter, the better for security reasons. And it of course also depends on the lifetime of your access token. If that access token lives one day, then well, it's no use to have the refresh token only live for one day. Like you see from the identity endpoints, the refresh token is similarly formatted as the access token. These are both bearer tokens, not JSON web tokens. And let's now see what's inside of these refresh tokens. So in the access token, we've got bearer token, access token, blah, 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 blah. Then all of the claims, some custom claims in here as well expires in and so on and then for the refresh token bearer token refresh token so that's one difference and the claims look very similar and the expiration time should be different as well longer lived than the access token so now that we know what's inside let's see which of these security measures were taken into account on the .NET 8 identity endpoints and let's start with the refresh token rotation. In summary that means that if you request to refresh the access token that it's recommended to also refresh the refresh token and if you can invalidate that used refresh token. And this way old refresh tokens should no longer be active and why that's a good idea is because even though your refresh token might have might have a lifespan of three days or a week or longer your access token will likely only live at maybe maximum one day so that means that actually the refresh token also only lives one day and not the full three days so let's do the test with the identity endpoints. So I authenticated again and now I get one with ICI. So that's good. Let's try to refresh the token and see if we actually get two new tokens. Well, we know we'll get a new access token, but do we also get a new refresh token? That's the question. So I'm only going to refresh using this refresh token with the ICI on the back. And what do we get? A new access token, of course, and then a new refresh token. But does that mean that the now old token, so the previous token, this one with ICI, is that still uh, a valid token or is that now used and invalidated and discarded as an old token let's try that again ah and we get a new token again 
If we were to try that with our own custom JWT authentication, that shouldn't be possible. So now we get a new refresh token, that's good. And now if we try that again with the old token, we should get a 403 forbidden, which means that the token is no longer valid. We successfully rotated the token. So we got a new access token, we got a new refresh token, and we made sure that the old refresh token is no longer valid. So it can be reused again. So that's not great eh? from the .NET 8 identity endpoints. Um, and I had a suspicion because there's nothing getting stored in the database to then check in the database whether that token was already used or something. So, well, the .NET 8 identity endpoints can't really know whether a token was already used. Um, and the only security in that refresh token is actually this security stamp. So at refresh, they're going to check whether uh, the security stamp was used to create that, to issue those tokens, so that refresh token. But that's where it stops. It's not like they're storing the refresh token and the ASP.NET user tokens, which may be an ID, to then invalidate them afterwards, a bit like we did in the JWT. So if we check, we made a extra table, if you remember from that video. And in that table, actually the refresh tokens get stored. So the value is the actual refresh token and then the ID is also used. The ID is stored inside of the access token. That's why I need to provide both the access token and the refresh token in my custom example. And then both of these get checked and if there's a match, then it's successful, but also we've got this is used and is invalidated, these two columns. This is used column is used for token rotation. So that means when an old token was used, it's now no longer valid. Then in the code, we make, we do a check whether that token is used or not. Let's take a look at that. Let's see what the refresh tokens, and that was about here. So we check the refresh token expiration, whether it's invalidated. We'll talk about that later. That's more the reuse detection. That's the next thing. And then we've got this is used, which was the case for what I just demonstrated. The old token was already used to get a new one, so it's no longer valid. We return a 403 forbidden ex access exception. And we also see it logged in here, invalid refresh token. So that's a security improvement that I have in the custom JWT implementation that the .NET 8 identity endpoint is not doing. So then we saw the is invalidated and that's actually for the refresh token automatic reuse detection, which basically means if let's say two users, one legitimate user, like they say here, and one malicious user, an attacker and for some reason the attacker got their hands on the on a refresh token of the legitimate user it got leaked or something and then the the malicious user if the malicious user is first then they will get successfully refresh that those tokens which is unfortunate but yeah that's what happens but if then the le legitimate user after afterwards also tries to refresh, it's being detected that a token was reused. So that same refresh token was reused and then they're going to block all the tokens for that user. 
So then the user has to manually authenticate again to get a, a new valid access and refresh token. And how they do that is kind of keep a third column. So one more column. And that's going to store something like a secret or they call it the family base. So that's a, a bit, maybe a bit like the security stamp. And all tokens that were created based on that security stamp will then get blocked and validated. So then none of the tokens with that base, with that family base, with that security stamp will be valid anymore. Cross-site scripting attacks where the attacker injects some uh, JavaScript code, for example, to steal your tokens, to read out the local storage, for example, and get those tokens. And then I have one final tip, and that is to always validate the tokens you're using, not just decode them and use them. Because otherwise anyone could just alter tokens, forge tokens and do whatever they want in your applications if you don't verify with that secret. So that secret is also a bit like that security stamp but then configured in your app settings and that's used to generate all of the JWT tokens. So what I want to do as a last experiment is to actually give myself more permissions uh, using a token and see what happens and see if my backend actually verifies that token and not just decodes the token. Because I saw a YouTuber, I'm not going to name him, but he was decoding the token in the front end and the Blazor WebAssembly application, which seems to be a rather bad ID, since I can just go to an application and alter my local storage settings based on a forged token, so with more permissions, and then I can just do whatever the hell I want inside of that application, like I'm an administrator or anything like that. So instead of decoding that token in the front end to get the user data, my approach is usually to get a, to make an authenticated endpoint. So odd slash me, which needs, well, authentication. So by that time you're successfully authenticated and that to those tokens are verified. And only then I want to decode the token and return that data. That's an extra API call, but at least then you're certain that the user data didn't, didn't get forged and that the permissions weren't messed with. So the next experiment is to now authenticate in this application, not as an administrator, but as a regular user. I'm going to grab that token from the app, from the local storage. So let's grab the token. I authenticated. Uh, yeah, same there. Uh, the access token, yes. And let's try this token. I'm going to replace that. So I could normally do edit tokens, edit value, I mean. And then delete all of the access token based in my access token. And there we go, paste. Couldn't do anything that administrators could do. I clicked around a bit and then I refreshed the page. And if I then refresh the page, I get all kinds of 500s and 401s because that token was forged and we called that odd dot slash me endpoint to actually, well, we tried to access uh, endpoints that needed authentication authorization. And it didn't accept that forged token because it verifies the, 
secret that it was that the token was made with so i think that was the final experiment that i wanted to do feel free to go and read these blog posts they are very very interesting and even uh, cookie versus token when to pick which and what are the differences because most of the flow is actually similar most of the data in there is also similar what are the advantages of tokens versus cookies and vice versa a disadvantage of cookies would be that they be less um, scalable but that's only for the cookies that would need to hit the database every time they need to access a resource so that's what it states here cookies can lead to scalability issues when they're used as pointers to server-side data but this is not the case with a cookie issued of .NET Core identity which means they actually behave similarly as a token so feel free to read all that both tokens and cookies have vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting attacks and so on so and of course they have different use cases uh, some native applications uh, well native applications desktop applications maybe some edge devices might not be able to use cookies and then need to implement token-based authentication and then maybe one last 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 thing that i wanted to mention is i was a bit in doubt whether it was a good idea to expose the refresh token to the front end since if you take a look at oauth 2 that refresh token usually does not reach the browser they kind of keep it in the back end and then they have some kind of mechanism to refresh tokens just using the access token and then maybe the refresh token in the back end and then they use some kind of uh, maybe a limited time code or state or maybe even a session cookie i should definitely read more into that but that's very interesting how they accomplish refreshing tokens but because of that, I didn't think it was a good idea to expose the refresh token to the front end. And that's probably not a good idea. And maybe not a great idea to store those in the local storage and so on. But, well, it's kind of a restriction of your custom implementation of JWT authentication. If you found this video valuable, if you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, because next videos will more likely be about maybe cloud functions. You can find all of the code produced in these videos and more on my Patreon. So become a member and you can get access to my commonly used NuGet packages, the original code. And even more, I do have this wonderful brand website with a lot of features, all of the features built in the brand website video playlist. Anyway, I hope I see you in the next video.